Oh boy, I was on the edge of my seat for this entire episode of Shogun. Episode 8 of Shogun, The Abyss of Life, picks up after the attempt on Seiki Nobutatsu's life by Nagakado, Toronaga's son. With the Toronaga clan having surrendered and being marched to Edo to attend to the funeral rites, I thought this episode might have slowed down, but it was all gas and no brakes. I did not see anything coming from this entire episode. The different characters' reactions to the death of Nakakado was surprising. The absence of Fujisama did sadden me a little, but it was to be expected. She now belongs to Izu. The amount of scheming and double-crossing in this episode is incredible. It can be confusing at times because you're unsure what is just the difference in customs between us and the people of the Japans, but if you manage to keep track of it, it's quite an intricate web they're weaving. You just need to remember that things were said or done in the previous episodes that are being referenced here. I especially like the location of the new church in Edo. Such lovely scenery. Some pretty huge sacrifices are made in episode 8, with many in Clad and Toronaga being left out of the plot and questioning what they are even fighting for. This is not helped by the presence of Blackthorn, whose lack of understanding of anything allows the main characters a moment of reflection upon the reasons why they do the things they do. Is it better to be bound by duty or to do what is right? Blackthorn is also confronted with some harsh realities as he becomes more aware of where he sits, not just among the people of the Japans, but with his place in the wider world. Mariko is thrown deep into the plot and is finally realising her own form of independence. I really, really enjoyed episode 8 of Shogun The Abyss of Life, so much so that I'm giving it a 10 out of 10. There were no battles or explosions, but a lot of really intricate plotting and great scenes of dialogue. I could not see that main plot point coming. I would not have thought it possible. But again, it shows the complete dedication to duty among the samurai. All of the main characters had their beliefs tested, and some of them came out holding fast to their beliefs, others were shaken to their core. Amazing acting. There was one scene with Toronaga, I thought he might have been overacting, but once the curtain was lifted, a second watch rewarded me with a better appreciation of the subtleties of the performance. I can't speak highly enough for this episode. I keep thinking it's going to start sucking, but it just keeps raising the bar. Let's get straight into the spoilers without even a moment's pause to remind you to subscribe. The journey to Edo has made Toronaga ill, with what appears to be a cold. He is also in mourning for his son Nagakado and has just sentenced his clan to perish at the hands of Ashido and Asaka. I like Yabushigi's discussion of Nagakado's means of death, asking his retainer to remember to write that one down. He ranks that as more embarrassing than being bald alive, but less embarrassing than being eaten by dogs. I'm very happy to say that our man Yabushigi features prominently in episode 8 of Shogun. Mariko informs Blackthorn via exposition dump that she was told to give him back his journals once they reached Edo, and that he is free to leave with his men. Blackthorn questions what happens to Mariko. He says she should not go to Osaka, but her loyalty ensures that she must. This is important for later on. So many lines in this episode feed into the later scenes, so stop folding your socks and pay attention. After the title, we get a sweet drone shot of Osaka and Lady Achiba is back and she has Ashido by the short and curlies. He's simping for her something fierce and wants her to publicly announce their alliance. She's like, uh, maybe after I see Toronaga grovel. So it seems like she maybe doesn't want him dead. She wants him alive before her. Ashido wants to marry her, but she goes cold and I'm thinking that now she's seen that he's not actually loyal but craving what the Taiko had. He wants her, and he wants the power. I really liked this wake scene with Hiramatsu, Yabushigi, Bantaro, Omi, and the Edo generals. It really shows what each of them values in a samurai. And I think my esteem for Omi just doubled. While everyone else was talking of Nagakado's shortcomings, Omi mentioned some of his strengths. This also shows that he and Blackthorn are thinking along the same lines. At least Nagakado did something. It may have been reckless, but he did something. Notice the scene ends with Hiramatsu, just after Omi says that Nagakado gave his life in the name of his lord. Foreshadowing? At the funeral, Yabushigi is trying to get Hiramatsu to agree to fight. 
He points out that the generals are wearing their armor out of protest at Torinaga's surrender. But Hiramatsu is going along with it and tells Yabushigi that he's to deliver the cannons to Asaka. Poor old Yabushigi, he can't catch a break. Why is it always me that has to be the first to go? Such good acting and direction at the cremation. Bantaro watches on with a barely contained rage. He's ready to fight. Yabushi looks on in despair. He's lost the will to go on. Omi is looking on in disbelief. Is this all we're going to do? Torunaga hasn't been to visit his new granddaughter and his wife, Lady Rin, Lady Achiba's sister, says that she heard he was too sick. Bantaro wants to make Mariko a nice cuppa. She likes her tea like she likes her men, white. Blackthorn is finally shown to be competent in conversational Japanese. He wants charcoal. That guy might mind racing. Is he making bullets for his guns by melting lead, or is he making gunpowder? Charcoal is in gunpowder, isn't it? Father Martin tried to translate that he wants more firewood, but Blackthorn says that he needs charcoal as it gives off a better heat. Father Martin questions why the great Hatamoto is being shacked up on the outskirts of town and not in the castle with his lord. It's all part of the plan. I like the subtle things in this scene, like the extras passing by staring like they've just seen a man with the face of a dog. Father Martin asks Blackthorn if he's going to wear the Japanese style of clothing when he returns to his men. He says that he intends to, when in Rome. Father Martin informs Torunaga that he has attempted to sway Ono and Kiyama to change allegiance to Torunaga, but Lady Achiba has too tight of a hold. Torunaga's all like, yeah we know. Torunaga no longer wants Martin to speak Japanese. Mariko will translate for him as he cannot trust him. Martin sees that Torunaga loves the air, which Ishido does not. So if Torunaga can form an alliance with Achiba, she will depart from Ishido. But Torunaga knows that would never work, and there will be more bloodshed. He organises for all the generals who are in defiance of his surrender to be brought before him to pledge that they surrender with him. Saying all of this in front of Martin so he can report it back. Hiramatsu says to Yabushi, Omi and Bantaro that he's going to fight. Or why else would he send Martin back to Osaka with a message? I'm not sure of the significance of the tea ceremony. If you know, chuck it in the comments. It seems to be part meditative, part performative. Either way, it's very relaxing. Bantaro suggests that he and Mariko die together tonight. But she rejects his offer because she doesn't want to have anything to do with him, and especially not now that dying is convenient for him. She didn't so much wish to die, but to live apart from him, which she knew he would never grant her. She savages him with her line about preferring to live for a thousand years than to die with him. Bantaro's actor does a great job in this scene. His sobbing is truly believable. I had goosebumps throughout this scene. It was chilling. Blackthorn meets up with the crew of the Erasmus, but Salamander is disputing Blackthorn's leadership. So they punch on and Blackthorn whips his drunken ass. Blackthorn wants to sail for Yabushigi, seeing as Torunaga has decided to give up. Yabushigi thinks Torunaga hasn't given up yet, from what he heard from Hiramatsu. Blackthorn has decided that he can't go home and he can't stay in Japan, so now he needs to forge his own path. Omi almost looks hopeful that he would consider going against the wishes of Torunaga. I like the exchange regarding loyalty being senseless when it leads to suicide. Mariko questioning if it needs to be translated as it was probably intended for her. Next up, Gin is checking out the lovely couple of acres of bog land that Torunaga has set aside for her tea house. Poor old Omi. Now his missus will be too busy servicing randoms from around the kingdom night and day. He no longer knows what he's fighting for. I love the subtle emotions that play across his face. It's the little things that matter. I love how Father Martin gets a look at his plot and asks who the neighbours are. It's the brothel. Just more souls to save, Martin. Lady Dayoan, who I believe is the Tycho's wife, has had a stroke and is now on her deathbed. Lady Achiba comes to her side and offers pain relief. Lady Dayoan asks that Oshiba release the hostages. Torunaga has his samurai appear before him and demands that they sign an oath to join him on the trip to Osaka to surrender. 
This is the most tension-filled scene yet. And shocking. I never thought it would play out the way it did. The Edo generals refuse to follow Toronaga to Osaka. They want Ashido to have to fight here instead. Hiramatsu informs Toronaga that he will commit Sudoku immediately if Toronaga does not change his mind. Hiramatsu telling Toronaga that he would die in vain, and Toronaga telling him to die had me looking like Omi. Isn't somebody going to stop this madness? Geez, the level of acting from all involved is just mesmerizing. I'm getting choked up watching this for a third time. TV shouldn't be like this. We don't deserve it. Bantaro is asked to second Hiramatsu, and he says he'll follow behind him, but Hiramatsu denies him this request. The music swelling matches the growing tension perfectly as Torinago watched Hiramatsu disembowel himself before Bantaro lops off his head with a single perfect strike. My jaw joined Hiramatsu's head on the floor as I didn't think it would actually happen. I remember thinking Torinaga looking like he was overacting, like he was chewing a toffee. But once you realize that he and Hiramatsu had this all planned to sway the rest, you realize this is a man whose best friend has just sacrificed himself for this cause and he has to pretend that he does not care. Heavy hitting stuff. Again, all of the actors are acting their asses off. Brilliant. So Hiramatsu sacrificed himself to get Yabushigi to ally himself with Blackthorn. I guess Yabushigi can butter Ashido up with a gift of cannons. When Torunaga asked Mariko if she was ready to do a part, I thought Mariko's line was going to be the end of the episode. It would seem like the perfect ending. Lady Achiba comes and presents herself to Lord Ashido. But as this was just after Torunaga stated that Osaka must believe his surrender is real, I'm questioning if she's really presenting herself fully to Ashido. Yabushigi is allied with Blackthorn now, and they are taking the guns to Osaka. But Mariko arrives and says that Torunaga wants her to accompany them to Osaka. She's pretty handy with a pole arm. I'm just happy that Yabushigi and Blackthorn are friends. They would make a good buddy cop movie. Torunaga gets out of bed and he's as fit as a fiddle. He goes to his son's cremation site and promises his son that he won't waste his and Hiramatsu's sacrifices. And that's the end. Wowee! What a ride! Another episode that made me feel so many emotions. Fear, anger, sadness, joy, and so much tension. You can carve it with a knife. Once again, Shogun Episode 8, The Abyss of Life, gets a 10 out of 10 from me. I was on the edge of my seat for the duration, and the Sudoku scene had me hovering slightly above it. I'm constantly amazed by the quality of this show. The sets, the costumes, the music, the story, and especially the acting. The acting in the Sudoku scene was unbelievably good. I was there. I was in the room with them, and I felt what they were feeling. Incredible stuff. Major respect to the actors behind Torunaga, Hiramatsu, Bantara and Omi for their performances during this most pivotal of scenes. They had me man, they had me believing that Torunaga was actually giving in. I was living in the moment and not thinking of all the prior episodes and his willing and dealing. I would have made a great informant to get suckered in by their display. Only two more episodes to go. I'm going to miss Shogun once it's over, but I'll be glad for having watched it. If Shogun doesn't win big come awards season, there's something wrong with the system and it needs to be dismantled. Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, please consider subscribing. I release reviews occasionally when time allows and a thumbs up would be a big motivator for further reviews. If you didn't like it, feel free to leave a thumbs down and let me know how I can improve in the comments below. Anyway, I'm Mixie. Thanks for your time and have a good one.